Good morning! Hey y'all! Welcome back to another edition of Crossroads Online. I'm Austin. I'm Shelby. And we're excited to hang out with you again for another amazing worship experience. Now to get the ball rolling for today, we need you all to do one quick thing for us. Shelby, what is it? Let us know where you guys are attending from. Whether it be from your kitchen, your bedroom, your living room, your backyard, your porch, wherever it is, please let us know in the comment section down below during this time where you guys are attending from. That's right, Shelby. Also, we want to encourage you all to share this video. We want to get the word out to as many people as possible and invite them to worship with us today. And if you don't know how to share this video, share me what are some ways they can do so. So if you guys are on Facebook, go ahead and go to that bottom left-hand corner, click that share button so your whole timeline, all your friends and family can see what you're doing at this time by watching church online and they can join you. Or if you're on YouTube, go ahead and go to that bottom right-hand corner, click that share button. They give you a plethora of options. Click all those options so all of your friends and family can join you by watching Crossroads online today. Yes, ma'am. Now, parents, we didn't forget about you guys. We got your kids their own unique worship experience today for them. Yeah. So we want to make sure that they're tuned in and they're good to go. And Shelby, how can the parents make sure their kids have their service lined up ready for them this morning? So if you want to get that second device out for them, go to mycrossroads.life slash kids. You will see the amazing video that our teachers put together just for your children today. Click that video, put on full size for them so they can enjoy their great service while you enjoy this service during this time. Sounds good. All right, Shelby, it's time for our question of the day! Oh, that never gets old. Yeah. All right, guys, but again, it's time for our question of the day. We love to engage with you all in the comment section before service. So today's question is pretty cool, pretty unique. What is your favorite fall time warm beverage? So what's your favorite warm beverage to drink during the fall months? Shelby, you first. So I usually like hot cocoa, like normal mm -hmm. hot cocoa, and then I put um, caramel or hazelnut creamer in it and put like whipped cream on top. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Shelby, I'm just like you. A good cup of hot cocoa with marshmallows is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, if I want something, maybe with some fruits in it, maybe an apple cider, a warm apple cider would be pretty good. Mm -hmm. But yeah, those are our picks for our favorite warm beverages. Let us know in the comment section below what your favorite warm beverage is to drink during this time of the year. We want to remind you all about our devotional groups. And our devotional groups give us an opportunity to dive deeper into God's Word and figure out how we can apply that to our daily lives. And if you're interested in being a part of a devotional group, just type in the word devotional in the comment section below and we'll make sure you get all the information so you can be good to go for our devotional groups. We want to remind you all as well, today we are having communion. So it's communion Sunday. So we want you to go ahead and get your water and get your crackers or your bread. That way when Pastor D takes us through communion, you'll be good to go. All right? And so with that being said, Shelby, let's go ahead and get our hearts and minds prepared for praise and worship. Like 
Your love is so amazing. Your love is so amazing. Your love is so incredible. Your love is so incredible. Your love is so amazing. Your love is so amazing. Your love is so incredible. Your love is so incredible. And I never get enough of your love, Jesus. Never get enough of your love. And I never get enough of your love, Lord. Never get enough. This is Pastor Darren. It is uh, the second Sunday in the month of October, and this is the, the day we we, um, we celebrate the communion meal. And so, as you all know, God, uh, Jesus Christ gave us this meal to help us remember who He is, remember the wonderful things He's done, and also to to make sure that there's unity in between us as brothers and sisters. All right. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna read our scripture, which is again our tradition at our church. 1 Corinthians 11, chapter, verses 23 through 30, but I want you to, if you can, turn to it and read along with me, or I want you to get your prayer request ready, because I'm going to pray after this. I'm going to pray, but I'm going to pray for you, and whatever prayer request you have, go ahead and type it in comments, and we'll pray for you, and we'll make sure we pray for you for that specific need this week. Listen to this. This is 1 Corinthians 11, 23. It says, For I pass unto you what I received from the Lord himself on the night he which he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus. He took some bread. He gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. So anyone who eats this bread or drink this cup of the Lord unworthily is guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. That is why you should examine yourself before eating this bread and drinking this cup. For if you eat this bread and drink this cup without honoring the body of Christ, you are eating and drinking God's judgment upon yourself. That is why many of you are weak, some are sick, and some have even died. But if you would examine yourself, we would not be judged by God in this way. All right, so we just want to take a moment, examine ourselves. There is any sin in our life that maybe we've committed willingly and some that we did not that we committed that we didn't know consciously that we were sinning. Let's take a moment just to examine ourselves to see the things that God will bring to our mind and our hearts that we will be forgive our forgive, be asking for forgiveness for, and that we might be right with God and right with one another. And also again, remember if you have a prayer request, this is the time to put it in the comments and we'll pray for you. So Father, we thank you for this moment. We take this moment to examine ourselves, our mind, our thoughts, even the words that have come out of our mouth this week. We ask that you, Lord, forgive us, for you know all things about everybody and everything, which includes us. 
And so we just thank you for, first we confess our sin to you and we ask you to forgive us, some that we know we did and some unconsciously that we know that, you know that took place that we don't know that we did, but you know. And so we just ask complete your complete forgiveness. We ask for your grace and your mercy, Lord, and the blood that continues to cover us and makes us right with you and, and right with one another. So we take this moment to ask you to forgive us, teach us, help us, to walk in the ways that's pleasing to you. We thank you for who you are and what you're doing for us. And we love you, Lord. In your son Jesus' name we pray, amen. So again, if you've prayed that prayer, man, that many times, whatever you had between you and God is no longer an issue. Jesus, uh, death on that cross, raising from the dead, his blood has obliterated it. So it no longer is an issue between you and God, all right? So we celebrate the communion meal. The scripture says that Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, he broke it. He said, this, this bread, it represents my body. As often as you eat it, you eat it, remembering me. So let's take this moment to eat it together. In the same way after supper, he took the cup. Praying the prayer of a Jewish rabbi. He said, this cup represents a new covenant in my blood. As often as you do it, you do it, remembering me. Let's drink together. And they sang a song and went out to the Mount of Olives. And again, so we want to thank you for celebrating the communion meal with us. Again, whatever you had, hopefully you feel if it's a sacred moment for you as it is for us as a church. And remember, we're praying for you. Whatever needs you put in there, we're going to be praying for you this week. And uh, stay tuned as we get closer to November. We'll be having some time of prayer and fasting and uh, so that we be prepare ourselves for what's coming up in our country coming up in uh, November. All right. And listen, we love you. We thank you for what you do for us how you make things happen. Your continued giving to Crossroad makes all the difference in the world. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for you that continues to tithe and make the kingdom of God prosper and be ahead of the game like you guys are doing. And we're grateful to God for you. And we declare, listen, we declare the blessing of the Lord on your life. We declare the blessing of the Lord on everything you touch. The blessing of the Lord, the same blessing that's upon this church is on your life because you give. We thank you. God bless you. We'll see you online several this week. Peace. Welcome to Crossroads Church. We're so excited to have you here with us this morning for our worship service online. Now, if this is your very first time, welcome to our family. We're so glad to have you. And what we want to do is we want to take this moment to get to know you just a little bit better. So do us a favor and type in the word new in the comment section below if this is your very first time hanging out with us. What we want to do is get to know you a little bit better, connect with you, and we've got a gift waiting just for you. Yes, and you don't want to miss out on that free gift. Right. So usually during this time, guys, if we were in person, we'll be greeting each other, high-fiving, hugging, but since we are still virtual, go ahead and take this time now to greet each other in the comment section down below. Say, hey, what's up? Good morning, peace sign, praise hands. However you like to do so, go ahead and take this time now to greet each other in the comment section. If you missed out on our summer semester of life groups, do not worry. Our fall semester will be starting very soon and they're gonna be just as awesome. Our life groups give us an opportunity to connect beyond the walls of church and again, dive deeper to learning more about God's word. So if you're interested in becoming a part of our life groups, which are fantastic, just type in the word life groups in the comment section below and we'll get you all the information you didn't know so you'll be up to date regarding life groups. Yes, and also you guys, we would love for y'all to follow us on our social media accounts. You don't want to miss out on the content that we post during the week. So if you're on Facebook, go ahead and go to Crossroads ATL, like that page. If you're on Instagram, go to Crossroads ATL, follow that page so you can see all the amazing content that we post throughout the week and also keep you updated with our events at our church. Amen. Now, if you've been visiting with us online for the past few weeks or past few months, we want to give you an opportunity to become an e-partner. We want to give you a chance to help us continue building our ministry and give you an opportunity to serve with us. So if you're interested in becoming an e-partner with Crossroads, just simply type in the phrase e-partner in the comment section below and our staff will get you the information so you can become an e-partner. Crossroads, we want to continually thank you for your generosity towards our ministry. Your giving, as always, allows us to continue building the kingdom of God. And we've got some pretty incredible changes coming here very soon. We're building our studio, making some great changes to our website, and that's all because of you. So if you're interested in giving today, we have two distinct methods we can do so. The first method is via Cash App. Just open up your Cash App application and type in the username dollar sign Crossroads ATL 
that's us. And then you'll be able to put your desired giving amount from there. The second way you can give is via the church website. All you have to do is visit the giving portion of our website at crossroadsatl.com forward slash give. Just follow those instructions that come up on the screen and you can input your desired giving amount that way. And also, we do have a feature for recurring giving. So if you want your giving to be automated where you don't have to keep worrying about it each week or each month, we can do that. Just visit the Crossroads online giving page again at crossroadsatl.com forward slash give. Just follow those instructions and you can set up your recurring giving that way. Yes, and also we would love to know one person that you're grateful for today, whether it be your family, your spouse, your whoever it is, let us know in the comment section down below during this time, one person that you're grateful for. That's right. Well, during this time, we're going to prepare our hearts and minds to praise and worship. See a victory. I'm gonna see 
of victory for the battle belongs to you lord you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good everybody say you take what the enemy meant for evil you turn Somebody give him worship in his place. Hallelujah. You turn it. Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Pastor Darren. This is Crossroads Church Online. We want to thank you for being here. Thank you for, for uh, worshiping with us this morning. I hope everybody in your whole family is attending the service today by sitting down with you, eating your favorite food or drinking or whatever, And but you're, you're, you're tuned in, you're leaning in, you got your pen, your paper, you're ready to go because this is a sacred moment. So we want to thank you for being here. This is a great day. This is the day the Lord has made. We will be excited about it. We're glad about it. Jesus is Lord. We love him. He's good. He's always good. All right, so let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for who you are. We're so appreciative of just this day you've given us, how you continue to reign in our lives. Despite everything that's happening, you reign in our lives. So we, we thank you for that. We continually pray for our brothers and sisters that are watching and those that are, that are, that, um, are going through some, some tough times right now. You know about it. So we pray about, we pray for them and we just pray your will be done and that your kingdom will come. And we thank you for all you're doing and how you're helping us in ways, Lord, that we can't even see. But we thank you for it and we give you praise. Now we thank you for this moment. Open our eyes, our ears, our understanding and our hearts that we might hear your word and your word might uh, resonate in our spirits, Lord. And we thank you for it in your son Jesus name. Amen. All right. Well, again, good morning. This is Pastor Darren. This is Crossroads Church Online. We want to thank you for being here. A couple weeks ago, uh, we started a new series and it's called God, God is with us moving forward. How many know we got to go forward? We got to move forward. And if God is guiding us, we'll never be wrong. All right. So um, again, I hope you're here. I hope you're ready to go. All right. You ready? Got your pen. You got your paper. You ready to go? Get your camera out too because you might take pictures. Because, you know, we kind of go kind of fast because my time is kind of short. All right, so let's talk, let's talk about God is with us. Listen, I was cleaning out my car the other day, and, um, and I started reminiscing. I cleaned out my truck, and I was reminiscing on how things have really changed over the years. And, you know, since I was a kid, boy, things have tremendously changed. We used to ride without seatbelts. I don't know if y'all know that. You know, that, that might be too far for some of you all. But we used to drive, we used to ride in our automobiles without seatbelts. Matter of fact, I remember... We, as a family, we drove all the way to Virginia, all the way to Virginia, uh, without seatbelts. We picked my, my, my mom had a sister who had a little boy. And matter of fact, he, he's almost 40, that little boy I'm talking about. <laughs> but we drove back with him. He was six months old in the, back, in the car uh, with no seatbelts, no baby seat, none of that. Listen, that was, that was normal for us. It, it was just our norm. And, and uh, like <laughs> I got to put this picture here because that was us. That was me as a, as a kid. We used to ride in the back of pickup trucks just like that. It was, that was our normal. It was not against the law. That's what we did. Okay. Uh, and then, you know, what was crazy is we used to, <laughs> like my parents would go to the grocery store. I don't know about, you know, you, you, some of you are, but we go to the grocery store and they leave us in the car. Especially if you, you know, we played outside. So if you were dirty, my mom looked at you and said, boy, you dirty. You can't go in here. Your, your, your stuff dirty. No, sit in the car. So we used to sit in the car, hot car, till they came back out. And, and man, listen, now I'm not, I'm not advocating leaving your kids in the car, but there was nothing like a good hot car nap. Sleep with salva coming down and you just, y'all, y'all don't know that. I don't know about that. But anyway, but listen, but that was our normal, man. That was our normal. And, and then we, you know, every car had a, ashtray right every car every y'all remember that even the back seats had ashtrays because everybody smoked S secondhand smoke was no big deal it was normal it was it was our norm right and, and so you know it's crazy i'm saying this is it, it's because uh i as i was thinking again i'm cleaning up my car thinking about this uh and i'm saying to myself man what things change so fast but, but, you know, it was technology that, that caused this change in our lives that has brought more of a progressive type lifestyle for us, right? But then I, I started thinking, I said, but you know what? Seems like the more technology has come, the more fear has increased. We become more fearful than we were back in those days. We were not, I mean, you know, parents were scared. And of course, we know the world has gotten 
worse, but parents were afraid to leave kids in their cars, all those type things. Because, and again now, uh, God was never intended for fear to be a part of our normal lives. He never intended that, but it has increased and, and, and you know, just like I use your imagination to go back and think about some things that might have happened in your childhood that was normal, right? I want to think about this. I want, I want to use your same imagination to let, let, let's, let's spring forward a little bit. Let's think about heaven, this place where God says, I mean, Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you, right? Let's think about it. There is no fear there. There's no death there. There's no fear. We know fear, fear comes from death, but without death, there's no fear. So there's no death there, so there's no fear there. Think about that. That's even hard for us to comprehend that. You know why? Because we have marinated our lives and our culture, our world is marinated with fear. Everything that, that's done, you have to really check yourself to see, am I being afraid of being hesitant? Is fear impacting what I'm doing? Because it's so, so prevalent here, right? And so, you know, as we think about heaven, think about this. I, I was thinking about, again, I'm, I'm cleaning out my car and this is my mind thinking. And I said, I said, you know, man, we get to heaven, we'd be able to do, you know, the things that we can do. Like, I, th I thought about, we probably get to swim in heaven. But there would be some people that didn't know how to swim on the earth, but you don't have to worry about drowning. You just jump in. Because there's no death. There's no fear, right? You can, <laughs> you can, you can ride roller coasters. Are we going to have roller coasters in heaven? I don't know. We got them here. So I'm just, again, I'm thinking, maybe so, maybe. If Walt Disney's up there, that's a possibility, right? It's a possibility. <laughs> but again, these are things that we can do. If you, you know, some people are afraid to ride horses, all those things. Even, even play with snakes. I know, I know half of y'all are like, oh, no, I ain't doing that. But see, again, you won't be afraid of heaven. Why? Because fear don't exist there. You see that? So y'all, you see the two parallels? Because again, I just believe where God is taking us, whatever good was normal and fear is not normal. So what do we do? Uh, we, our, our problem is, is that we've been marinating in this fear. We've been marinating with thoughts of fear for, for most of our life. We hear it every day, all day long. I mean, that, that's why we're doing this teaching series, God is with us, so that we might be able to address some of these issues. Because you can't, you, you won't believe God is with you and you can't move forward if you deal with, if you allow fear to, to uh, prohibit you from doing it, right? But, but as I said, God did not, it was never his will for fear to be a part of our normal lives. That was not God's will. That happened as a result of Adam's sin. But since we all have experienced it, we have to know how to deal with it. And I believe the scripture teaches us that we must attack our phobias. We must attack fear with the word of God. We must say what God's word says concerning fear. Okay, we can't address it. Let me give you. Let me give another a, another example. Is uh, I went to I went to um, the doctor's office the other day, and my, my doctor and he he was he was saying some things to me. He uh, we were going over my results and, and talking and all that stuff, and he said he said uh, uh, he he, not, he acknowledged that I had lost some weight. He said you lost some weight. That's really good. I'm proud of you. You know I have I lost almost ten pounds. Just in case y'all can't see it, you understand. Anyway, but uh, <laughs> but but he was. He was, uh, he was, we were talking about it and he, and he said, uh, he said, oh, that's really good. This is impact your labs and all this stuff. And then he said, he said, uh, do you have a scale? I said, yeah, I have a scale. He said, how often do you weigh yourself? I said, uh, I try to avoid it. He said, why? I said, because I, I don't want to be, you know, I just don't want that pressure and all that. He said, no, no, no. He says, you have to use that as motivation to reach your goals. I said, what do you mean? He says, you have to use that to attack your fears. And I said, so he didn't even know I was going to talk about that today. He didn't even know. And he said, you have to use this to attack your fear so that you might reach your goals. You see that? So, 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 man, listen, I said, boy, listen, it's so funny as, again, part of this whole teaching series is talking about repeating, being repetitious. It's so funny how, you know, um, we can, even in this world, we, 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 you know, we, are, we will attack fear when it comes to losing weight, trying to reach goals, but... We will hesitate to do it when it comes to spiritual things. No, we must attack fear with the word of God. Just like saying God is with us, that dispels the fear. That makes us not worry about the fear. And, and, then, and then we'll, we'll break down. Let me, let me share the scripture with you. Let me share the scripture. I'm getting excited, so y'all have, have to bear with me. All right, listen, here's the scripture. This is Hebrews 13, chapter 5th through the 6th verse. It says, don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, listen to this. I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. 
so I will, I will, I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? You see that? You see that? You see what what, what, what Paul is saying, man? The, listen, the most powerful thing that we have on earth is the Word of God. It is the most powerful. You know why? Because everything that exists, it was created. Why? When God spoke His Word, and everything came to life. Without God's Word, there is no life. Because in His Word is His power. So again. He, he, he's teaching us here, man. Listen, you got to saturate your life with the word of God. You have to use the word of God in your life. And most importantly, you have to use your word, the word of God to attack your phobias. All right. And again, the main thing is, is what you say over and over again. What are you saying? Most things we repeat fear over and over again. It's so easy to do. It's just saturated. It's just a normal for us, right? So we want to break that normal and we want to start a new normal. And this new normal is, is using the word of God to the things that, that's happening in our life. It's to take God's word and use it. Not just say, oh, well, I know about it. Satan don't care about what you know. He, he cares about what you believe. All right? So let's talk about it. you got to be a repeater. Somebody say repeater. Pastor, what is a repeater? Y'all got it. All right, good. Listen. It's this. It's a person who says something over and over until believing it becomes second nature. Again, as I said to you all the last couple Sundays, in our world, repeating is normal. It, it's what drives our culture. Repeating. Our, our culture, again, as I said, it, it approves of us using the repeating system to reach goals, to, to, you know, to get our degrees, all those type things, to make money, to build our dream life. It does, but, but start repeating the scriptures and people say, oh, you, you, you see, you don't get went a little left. No, I wasn't left when I was trying to lose weight. And I was using to say, I, I'm going to do this. I got this. <laughs> no, I, I want to use the word of God because I believe God backs his word. How about you? Do you believe God backs his word? Man, God backs his word. It's just like we just read in uh, Hebrews 13, 5. He, he says, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. Why, why not say that? Why not repeat that? Because again, now remember talking about marinating? If repeating it means I'm marinating in it, okay? That I'm over and over again, I'm marinating. All right, let's talk about it real quick. Let's talk about it. Last week, we talked about Moses, right? We talked about Moses, yeah, and Moses brought the children of Israel to the Mount Sinai. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Thank you. I heard that, amen. And, uh, and so, and then God told Moses, hey, Moses, I had enough of these people. They stiff necked, they hard headed. I don't want to deal with them no more. I'm out, right? And, Mo and then Moses said, hey, time out, God, you can't go. You know, if you leave, we ain't going nowhere because without you, we ain't going. Y'all remember that? So now we're going to pick up the story where, where, where Moses is dead. And as Joshua's turn to lead the people, it's a whole new paradigm shift. It's a whole new regime. Joshua is in charge. Moses is dead. And see, for the children of Israel, Moses was like God because he spoke. They, one time they said, Moses, we want to hear from you. We want to hear from God. And God spoke. And they said, okay, no, we were just playing. We just playing. We want to hear from Moses. So Moses spoke like the voice of God. So all of a sudden now Joshua's in charge. And I want you to listen to how God addresses Joshua. And he shows him how to handle his fears. Listen to the scripture. This is, this is Joshua 1, 7 through 9. Listen to what God says. He says to Joshua, be strong and very courageous. You see that? What's he dealing with? Fear. You see what he's telling him? He's addressing his fears. Be strong, very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study the book of instructions continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Listen to what he says. Be strong and what? Courageous. Don't be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You see that? Oh my God. See, we can just dismiss right now. Well, that was the word of the Lord. So that's what Joshua repeated over and over again. And he, and we'll see later when he met with the people. He said that God is with us. We, you know, he repeated it. Be strong and courageous. And then the people start saying, we'll be strong and courageous. Over and over until they saturate their lives. I'm telling you now, people of God, you're not going to have strong faith. You're not without saturation. You're not going to have, you, you're not going to even believe God is with us. You, listen, God forbid trying to win against fear. We won't ever do it without saturation. In other words, without saying it over and over, God is with me. God, he's with me. Pastor, you don't understand what's happening. God's with you. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never abandon you. I'm always, then he said, say, I'm talking about Hebrews 13, 5, we just read. He said, say it with confidence, the Lord is my helper. You see that? Oh my gosh. So God wants us to be confident 
when we say his word and speak his word and say what the scripture says concerning our circumstances, not what the circumstances are saying. Because if we really believe God was with us, if we really believe it, that he's in our midst, we wouldn't repeat some of the things we repeat over and over again. All right, come on, let's talk about it. Let me give, let me give you some examples. What type, of peer, uh, uh, what type of fear should we attack? What are the type of fear we should attack? First of all, the manipulative fear, all right? It's a fear that controls us. It's a fear that seeks to control. This is what, this is what that fear looks like. Listen to this. It's thoughts of fear, listen to this, that is rehearsed in our mind to the degree that we actually feel like we have experienced the event, right? We actually think we have, and see what God was doing with, with Joshua is to help him understand is don't rehearse things that, that's gonna cause you to have fears, right? I told you I have a friend of ours, um, so afraid so afraid of snakes, man. You say, if you, you put up a picture, you say snakes, boy, they get all trembling. But see, that's, not, that's, that's the controlling fear. And again, man, the enemy doesn't care about what you know. We all, well, we know God. No, he, he don't care about what you know. He cares about what you believe. And if you believe God is with you, you don't have to allow, allow those things to, con, to control us. <clears throat> and, 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 you know, and again, sometimes when we're facing things and it seems like it's so big, you know, that it's, going, it's, it's stronger than us, wiser than us, all that type, that type stuff. Um, when all of that happens, we have to understand that's manipulative fear. Okay, so let me give you another, another example of manipulative fear is this. It's thoughts that minimize who God really is, and they attempt to control you as well. So, they, it, so manipulative fear, it has two sides to it. It tries to minimize who God really is. It's just lies, lies, and lies. That's how fear does. It's lies, lies, and lies. So we have to understand how important focus is when it comes to dealing with fear. How important focus is, okay? Because what will happen, man, what will happen is, is that uh, fear becomes strategic when it comes to you. It knows what buttons to push. It knows how to get you going. It knows what to do, man. So you have to you have to know how to attack it. I'll give you an example. When I was in high school, my my high school coach, man, he was really good. He was good at this. He was uh, he knew we, you know he was building our program and and you know I remember I remember we had this really big game. It was a big game and we we're playing. It was two. Our team was coming up. We were winning and we we're playing against the other team and they were good. And, you know, people were picking them to win, and, and they were bigger than us, and we, you know, we were fast and short and all that. And he came in our locker room before the game, and he said, they're not even taking you all serious. The quarterback is at the concession stand ordering a hot dog right now. And we got fired up. Boy, we were like, what? And so we were just all pumped up because it changed our focus. We, we stopped thinking about how big they were, how well, they were ranking. We, we, we focused in on they're not taking us serious. We went out there and we beat their butts, you right? So listen, that's what fear does. Fear tries to minimize how much God is with you. It tries to minimize, you know, all the things, all the promises of God that he's given us. But that's not what we're going to allow to do. We're going to attack it, okay, with the word of God. Okay, so talk about, and then listen, but there's there's this this uh, fear called reverential fear. It's, it's, it's our reverence of God. And what is that? Reverence, reverential, reverential fear is it's the reverence for God being greater than us, okay? And acknowledging that he is the solution to everything we need, so, all right? So you got that? And, and again, it's, it's this reverence we have for God that he's greater than us, man. And you know what else? And then, you know, we have to be careful too because we, we have, just have to know that God, man, he's full of love. He, uh, rever I can't say it that good. Rever reverential fear, that's it, right, man? Rever okay, reverential fear, you know what? It, it, it wants to control. It, it doesn't want to control you. It's love. It don't, it don't have to control you. I remember one time I had this young lady came to me in my office when I was in corporate, <clears throat> and she said she was talking to me because everybody knew I was, you know, a Christian. Then they found out I was a preacher and all this type stuff. So uh, they would come ask me questions. And she came to my office. She said, "Hey, um, I need to talk to you." I said, "Okay." Uh, um, she said, uh, "Yeah, you know." Um, she was talking about how, how she prays to God and how she saw God. And, and it was really, it wasn't through the eyes of, of reverence. It was through the eyes of really of that manipulative fear. That's what it was. And so she was saying, God is mad at me. And I know he's this because I messed up and I told some lie. And I told her, I said, no, you, you're, you're, you're dealing with God from the, from the wrong point of view when it comes to your fear of him. It should be a reverence. I said, but you got to understand his response is always love. His response is not to control you. You thinking God's trying to control you? He's not. He's trying to love you. So he ain't. He, so I had to tell her, girl, he ain't mad at you. Pray and ask him. She's like, but I don't ask him for nothing. I said, you should. 
He wants you to. See so you know what I'm saying? So I had to help her understand. Let me read this scripture to you. This is 1 John 4, 8, 4, uh, 17. It says this. It says, as we live in God and our love grows more perfect. Y'all see that? Our love must grow. Anyway, so we will not be afraid on the day of judgment, but we can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus lived here on this earth. Such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment. And this, and this shows that we have not fully experienced his perfect love. We love each other because he loved us first. You see that? So again, God's love is different from the love of, of this world, man. His love, we, we, we revere him, we respect him, okay? We need to show he's greater than us, but it's not for, he does not control us. He allows us, he allows us to make the choices to come to him. You understand that? So let's talk about it. I want to talk about this. Let's talk about this. What can we learn? Last week we talked about what, what can we learn from Moses and the children of Israel about being God being with us. So this time we're going to look at what can we learn from Joshua and the children of Israel about God being with us? What, how did they handle God being with us? Because we, as we said, God had to address their fears because Moses, now he's dead. So now God has to address those fears. So what, have, what can we learn? Let me tell you one thing. First, number one is this. We need to, we, worry must be taken seriously. Yes, I said it. <laughs> worry, ha again, you say, Pastor, I know all of this. I heard all this. That's why I'm repeating it. Because most of the time, we're not doing it. We're not doing it. We'll, we'll have stress headaches and all these type things. Won't sleep at night. Worry, worry. No, it's not good to worry. Grandmas, moms, dads, it's not good. It's not scriptural for us to worry, man. You understand that? Let me read. This is Joshua 1, 3, and 4. It says, I promise you what I promised Moses. Now, again, this is God talking to Joshua. And the first thing he addresses is fear. It's the very first thing he addresses. He said, he said I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set your foot, you will be on land I have given you. From, the, from, from negative to, I'm sorry, from the negative wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River in the east of the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites. All right. So what, what, is, what is he saying? He said, Moses, he said, Joshua, don't worry about them. Don't, don't set your mind on them. I know because again, now Joshua, Joshua's dealing with a bunch of complainers. He, I know none of y'all ain't complainers. I know you, you know, you, you good. But Joshua's going to deal with a bunch of complainers. Some go wrong. They start going, well, I wish we were, we, we were in Egypt. When we were in Egypt, we didn't have to worry about none of this. Sound familiar? Oh, yes. But see, again, it's normal to do that when you saturate in fear. It's normal to do that when you repeat over and over and over things that you fear. Okay? So, now, again, as I said, we must take worry seriously. In other words, don't do it. And that's something that all of us, all of us, even me, all of us, all of us, we have to recognize when this thing comes and we have to deal with it. Let me give you an example. I mean, years ago, somebody said years ago, I was, uh, I had, I had an issue with somebody. We had a disagreement and, um, and the spirit of God told me, he said, you need to deal with that. You have not, you not, you have not fully forgave. And I, and I, I said, okay, okay. But I, you know what? I didn't take it serious and I didn't address it. But then I noticed, as years come, I noticed how easily I, I, would, I would become offended by certain things and how I could stay angry. And so, you know, as I, 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 I noticed it and I, the Lord pointed out to me, you know, and, and, and in my conversations with him, I'm saying, okay, why am I getting so upset so quick and da-da-da? And the Spirit of God brought back to my mind. He said, I told you to deal with that issue you had with that person. And he said, what happens is when you don't deal with it, it's easy to come up in other relationships. It's easy to manifest in other areas of your life. And I said, wow. So that's what I'm saying. If we don't deal with worry, if we don't, if we don't address it and attack it with the word of God, that worry will, and all these other things will pop up in other places of your life. You think you had faith in one area, you, you look around, you ain't got faith. You get sick and you can't get, you ain't got enough faith to get healed. I need to call somebody. Well, it's because you, you never dealt with worry. Okay. All right. Yeah, you didn't. So listen, let me say this. So you must stop deceiving yourself and turn turn on your hate toward worry. What do you mean? Let me give you the scripture. This is this is Matthew 6, chapter 24, verse. It says this. Now, no, no one can serve two masters, for you will hate one 
Love the others. You are to be devoted to one, devoted to one and despise the others. You cannot serve both God and money. I love the King James Version. It says God and mammon. So in other words, Jesus said, you're going to love one and hate the other. You're going to love one, you're going to hate the other. So what I'm saying is you need to hate worry. Hate it. Like God hates it. God hates worry. Don't you know he hates it? He doesn't want his people, his kids worrying. You ever thought about your kids worrying? You want your kids worrying? No, you don't. So you shouldn't worry. Right? Why? Because it does not re reflect God being with you. Come on, man. We got to go. Number two. Number two. Listen. Listen. Again, we're learning what Joshua, what Joshua is going to teach us about God being with us. We have to identify, identify your vulnerable areas. Where are the areas where you're, you're vulnerable when it comes down to worry? Because the enemy knows how to attack. That's why Joshua had to repeat over to be, 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 be courageous, be full of faith. All right, let me, let me, let's look at it. Joshua 1, 5. It says, no one will be able to stand against you. Now, this is God telling Joshua. He said, no one will be able to stand against you. What? Oh, my God. We ain't got time to dig into that. Stand against you as long as you live. So what kind of promise he just told Joshua? As long as you live, nobody will defeat you. Wow. Can you believe that? Man, I take that promise as mine. What about you? Let me keep reading. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Be strong, Joshua, and courageous. For you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors. I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, uh, from them, turning either to the right or the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. You see that? So what was God saying to him? He was saying, hey, man, he, he told Joshua, he said, keep saying this over and over again. He got to, he, he wanted them to keep, because he told, he told him, he said, listen, I'll be with you just like I was with Moses. The same promise. He said, don't deviate. Y'all remember we just read that, right? Don't deviate. What's he saying? Keep doing what you were doing when Moses was here. And Moses had him repeating, God is with us. The, you know, the God that Yahweh, he's with us. He's with us, right? And he's telling the same thing. Be strong, Joshua. Go. The same promises I gave. Why? Because you got to identify where, you, where you're weak. And that's what God was telling him. Hey, Joshua, I know you're weak. You know, you, because he was right beside Moses. He was Moses' understudy. He said, you know, Moses is dead. Moses, that voice is gone. But be courageous. Why? Because I'm with you. So you have to know where you're vulnerable at. That's why fear attacks. I used to have a fear of flying. <laughs> I did. And I had, to, I had to address that fear. And I mean, listen, my wife will tell you, my wife will tell you, but don't, don't, don't listen to her too much. But she'll tell you, we get on that airplane, boy, and I'll be just like, whoo, I'll be swe I'm sweating, <laughs> sitting up in there all scared. You know, listen, and, but here's why, though, because all my life, all I heard was planes fall. Never been on a plane. In my mind, I experienced, I done, listen, in my mind, I done experienced the thing falling. What? You, you see what I mean? But so you have to identify what those vulnerable places are. And attack them. So I did. I, I, I did. And and let me tell you this point. Then I'm going to finish my story. God will choose the when and how to help you overcome your fears. God will choose. Yeah, he'll choose the when and how to help you. Listen, here, here's what he did for me. I got the, 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 the job that I, that I dreamed of getting. I got it. And guess what? We had private planes that flew us. I remember one time. Um, see, we're, we're here. In, where are we at? Over here in Marietta area. Uh, we would like, like if we want to go to, let's say Blue Ridge, I know it's about an hour away, right? We would get in our airplane and fly because we had to put miles on it as a company. And I used to hate it because I'd be scared. But the more I did it, guess what? The more, the less and less I feared. I had a chance to talk to the pilot. My boss was a pilot, but we had a retired pilot. I got a chance to ask questions and all of those things what begin to dispel the, the fear. He began to tell me, oh, no, here's what's happening when this is happening. Because, see, I was fine. You know, we get taken out and we get to bump in the turbulence. I hated turbulence, right? And I'm, I've, I've, I've learned and still learning all that stuff about it, right? And he was like, oh, no, that's no big deal. That's just air. That's just a bubble. You're just bumping like a bubble. What? And fear had me up there sweating. Wouldn't talk to my wife. Scared. She trying to talk to me. Don't talk to me. She what you do? I'm praying. <laughs> I guess I'm so scared, right? But listen. But the enemy would tap, man, listen, I wouldn't go to sleep at night. I would be sweating before we had to get on the plane. All those things. Because I was afraid to fly. I'm just trying to tell you, you got to identify those. And then you attack. So now what I do, I got a regiment. I attack. I start out days before. I'm attacking. Oh, no, God's with me. In Jesus' name, the angels ain't kept around. About. I start my regiment. Just like I would do with a pill. I start my regiment. Attacking phobia. Attacking fear. When I'm about to do something. You must do the same thing. Don't allow it to attack you, man. 
ruining your life. You can't have no fun. Can't even travel. I know people that won't even get in the airplane. Won't even travel. No, we going. When this thing is over, we traveling. I want y'all to know we going to places. You understand? All right, I gotta go. Listen, number three. Come on. How much time? I'm about. My, I'm doing good on time. All right, listen. Okay, number three says, listen, we must fight to magnify Jesus. Because what does fear do? Fear tries to shrink God. It tries to shrink him in our thinking so we, we think less and less of him. No, we got to think more and more of God. Listen to this. Let me show you. This is uh, uh, Joshua 1. Now, this is scripture. This is how God told Joshua. This is how you magnify me, make me bigger, or put me back in my place. Because what does fear do? Fear shrinks God and his ability to help us. Listen. Joshua 1, 8, 9, it says, study the book of instructions continually. You see that? So read your Bible. That's why we have devotional groups. That's why we have life groups. I hope you're in one. Listen, meditate on it day and night. In other words, think about it. When you're walking on the trail, when you're jogging, when you're in your car, think about it. Listen to this, this, these teachings over and over again. Only then will you prosper and succeed. You see that? He said, so I love how God put succeeding on meditating on what God said. God is with us. God is with us. He's with us. Think about that. Meditate on that. All right. This is my command. Be strong and courageous because, you know, most of the time we thinking about our problems, don't we? How much time do we spend thinking about our problems? We do it a lot because what's this trying to do? It's, it's try, it is trying to shrink God in our thinking. No, no, no. We must magnify Jesus. We must magnify what he said. I am with you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I want to show you this scripture. I know I'm giving you a lot of scriptures, but just, just take pictures, all right? Just write it down, take pictures. This is Matthew 6 and 5. Listen to what it says. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on the street corners, in the synagogue, wherever, wherever, I'm sorry, synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth, that is all their reward they'll ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you, and pray to your father in private. Listen to this. Then your father who sees what? everything will reward you. You see that? What? How about thinking about that? How about magnify that God sees everything? Let me take you an example. I was walking on the trail uh, this morning and uh, I was doing my walk, you know, I'm, I'm getting it. And and I'm thinking it was a little snake. He was in the, on the trail and I saw him down there. I was like, oh man. So so I had to go around, you know, and and, uh, and so I thought to myself, I said, man, because he was a little small little thing. And I said, I said, uh, man, God knows about that snake. He knows all about that snake. You know, he 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 puts systems in place so that snake can live and eat. I know y'all probably say, ooh, but but hey, listen, everything God created was good. We just we just heard bad things about it. But listen to him. Listen, everything God has put in place, He's put in place, um, even for that that little snake, right? Because He sees everything. He sees the little bugs. He sees the little the little frogs. All those things. He sees everything, y'all. Everything. Why can't we meditate on that? Think about that. It's think about think about how you're going to pay your bill. No, God has never left me. All these years, he's been good to me. I'm going to think, I'm going to meditate on that all day long today. Just how good he is. You see that? You see how it, it changes everything. And the enemy knows that. That's why he keeps bring, he tries to bring fear all the time. But you got to attack. Don't wait for it to get you. You got to get in. All right, my last point. We'll be done. Last point. Listen. Is that where I start? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, last point. Listen. We must counterattack fear. I just kind of gave that to you just now. We got to don't wait for the attack. You got to counterattack it. You got to hit it before it hits you. Like I tell you about, about my, my flag on the airplane. I don't wait till the day of. No, I start a week out. I know I'm be flying. I start a week out. I start hitting it with scriptures. Boom, boom. Because I know it's gonna come. It's gonna come because I've given it place. I saturated it for years. For 18 years I was afraid to fly, and that's all I talked about. It's all like over and over again. But now I hit it before it hit me. Boom, man, it's going to be a great flight. God is with us. Angel's going to be there. Oh, yeah, praise God. He's with us. He rebuked the devourer from my sake. What am I doing? I'm attacking fear <laughs> before it hits me. Wow. That's good preaching, Reverend. You ain't got to say, man. Y'all got to say. Listen, I'm going to show you this script. This is Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Uh, fifth chapter in the 15th verse. It says this. It says, so be careful how you live. Don't live like fools. But like those who are wise, make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Listen to this, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves. Making music to the Lord in your heart and give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see that? That's how you, that's how you counterattack fear. You sing to God. 
The Bible said you make music in his, your heart to him. You just worship God. You just sing. This is the day the Lord has made. I will be joy. Whatever you sing, you sing those songs and you just, you, and, and listen, as the scripture say, that's when you begin to experience the love of God. We read this earlier. You begin to experience his love and fear can't penetrate. Fear can't penetrate that love. It just can't. Why? Because God is greater than fear. So sing these songs. I get my little uh, my little plugs in my ear, and I got my music on the airplane. I'm I'm, I'm worshiping. I'm, I'm playing my little car game. I'm enjoying. We went, we flew to Chicago. I'm up there enjoying the thing. Then we hit some turbulence. Loom 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 all that like this. And the, the, young, the young lady next to me, she grabbing the seat. I barely looked up. Said, oh, "Praise God, we all right. Good. Why? Because I had already saturated my mind. God with us. He got us. We, 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 he with us. <laughs> but listen." You'll never get there. You'll never get there if you don't believe this and you don't put it into action. Even if you believe, if you don't put it into action, it's not going to work for you. You have to say, God is with me and believe it. God is with me. God's with me. Get up, get up in the morning saying it 10 times. God is with me. God is with me. God is with me. God is with me. God, he's with us. God, he got us. And then before you know it, the people around you, they're going to start saying the same thing. God with us. God got us. And then guess what happens? Your expectation rises. Your faith rises, and you 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 looking for God. Here he come. I know he coming. Yes, he coming. He gonna do it every time. God's gonna do it. He is so good. And, and listen, he always, always, always comes through. You just got to believe. All right. So remember, as I close, remember, you have to attack your phobias. Don't let them attack you. You attack them. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you again for allowing us to be here. We thank you for your word that you sent us. We are going to be doers of this word, not just hearers. So we thank you now. Help us to know when fear when fear comes because it's sneaky and it's, sometimes it's undetected. And sometimes we've lived with it so long we don't even know we're fearing. But the Spirit of God knows that he lives in us. Help us to know when we're fearing that we might address fear and attack it and move on, keep moving forward like you want us to. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Well, listen, if you're here today and you said, Pastor, hey, man, that thing hit me hard. I am a guy, I'm just a fearful person. Oh, I'm, a, I'm a young lady and I'm fearful and I know I need to address my fears and stop talking about them all the time and use the word of God that created everything to attack that fear and defeat it so I can live my life and enjoy my life and don't have to worry about driving everywhere I go. I can get on a plane and fly to Europe if I want to, whatever, and just enjoy my life. Listen, if that's you... And you say, Pastor, ask me, I want to start over. Hey, man, listen, it's real simple. I prayed this prayer again over 30 years ago. I say it repetitiously. We say it every Sunday. Why? Because I want you to use it when you win, 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 over, win other people to Christ and you make disciples for him. All right, so listen, if you, if you don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, repeat after me. Say, Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. If you teach me your ways, I'll live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. That was it. That's all I wanted. I just wanted God to teach me. Lord, if you show me how to do this, I'll do it. And I do. And listen, I've been doing it for over 30 plus years. I've been living for him. And, and you can do the same thing and God will give you the life you, you never dreamed you had. I promise you he will. He's faithful. He's good. He's always keeps his word. All right, listen, if you're here and you you, you want to be an e-partner with us, just put e-partner in the comments. We want to give you some information what that means to be, to join, to be an e-partner and join one of our devotional groups. And also, listen, uh, people of God, don't allow the enemy to stop you from giving. Some of you kind of cut back on your giving. You're afraid. No, man, listen, God got us. Even in the midst of all this, don't worry about it. He got you. Just continue to be faithful. We're going to make some changes within the next couple of weeks. The set is going to be changed. And it's because the faithful, faithfulness of the yo that give, those that tithe on a regular basis, and those that give. We want to thank you for it. We also have automated giving, too. We have automated giving. You can give without um, even thinking about it. All right? So, again, we love you, man. This is Pastor D from Crossroad. We're praying for you. A lot is going on. We're praying for you. Uh, expect us to be making some announcements real soon. But we love you all. We're praying for you. Be strong. Be courageous. God is with us. We love you. Peace out. Good man. Well, here at Crossroads, our main mission is to help people take their next step in their personal relationship with Christ. And honestly, Shelby, before you can take a next step, you've got to take the very first step. And that first step is making a decision to give your life to Christ. It's making the decision to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And I think, Shelby, we've got some people out there who have made that decision today. And we want you to know at Crossroads, we are celebrating with you and we are so excited with you because it's the best decision you could ever make. So if you made that decision today, just simply type in the phrase in the comment section below, 
I made a decision. That way our staff will reach out to you connect with you and we look forward to being a part of your new journey. Yes and also guys we would love to know one takeaway that you got from this week's sermon. Rather it be a Bible verse or quote a saying whatever it is go ahead and take this time right now to put it in the comment section down below. Yep. And also if you have any prayer requests at all we have amazing prayer warriors who are here to pray with you and for you during this time. So please don't hesitate at all to take this time to go ahead and go in the comment section down below type in your prayer request or click the link down below type in your prayer request in there and our prayer warriors will be reaching out to you praying with you and for you during this time. Yeah, Shelby, our prayer team is awesome. Yeah. Again, Crossroads, thank you all for your generosity and giving toward our ministry. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be able to build this without your support. So for that, we're truly grateful. So again, we have two methods for giving today at Crossroads. If you want to, the very first method is via Cash App. Just open up your Cash App application and find our username, which is dollar sign Crossroads ATL. There you'll be able to click on the link and then you'll be able to input your desired giving amount. The second way we can give here at Crossroads, if you don't have Cash App, is via our church website. Just visit crossroadsatl.com forward slash give, follow the instructions that come up on the screen, and you'll be able to give that way. And again, as a friendly reminder, we do have the feature for recurring giving. That way you don't have to worry about during the week or during the month. Just follow the instructions when you go back to that giving portion, and you can set that up for recurring giving however you choose to do so. And also, you guys, we would love for you guys to <clears throat> follow us on social media, whether it be on our Facebook or our Instagram. Go ahead and go on Facebook, follow us at Crossroads ATL, go like that page. Go ahead and go on Instagram, go follow that page at Crossroads ATL. You don't want to miss out on the amazing content that we post throughout the week for you guys. Yes, ma'am. So, Shelby, with that, that concludes another fantastic Crossroads online service. We love you guys, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Take care.